met up with Eva Nogales, the co-winner of the Life Science and Medicine Award here in Berkeley, California. She's receiving the Shaw Prize for her pioneering work in gene transcription, a process that's fundamental to life. Proper transcription ensures good health and dysfunction causes disease. Structural biologist Eva Nogales was born and raised in Colmenar, Viejo, Spain. So my parents grew up in post-Civil War Spain, where life was very tough. So they actually never had the chance to even go to high school. And they were obsessed with my brother and I going to university and having an education. She credits her high school teachers for sparking her interest in science. You were able to get enough concentration. Eva pursued a PhD in biophysics at the University of Kiel in the UK, where she was introduced to cutting-edge technology at the time, cryo-electron microscopy, or cryo-EM. The cryo stands for, for the fact that we look at our samples at very, very low temperatures. In 1998, Eva joined the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at the University of California, Berkeley. With her knowledge of cryo-EM, she set about figuring out the protein structures of gene transcription, an essential process for every cell in all living organisms. In our body, all of our cells have the same genome, the same DNA content but they're doing different types of gene transcription, meaning expressing, turning on different genes so that they become different. One becomes our skin, another one our heart, or another one part of our bones. Each one of these cells is deciding to just turn on a certain set of genes. The first thing to do this um, is to read that gene, and this uh, has to be done by first identifying where that gene starts. This is the job that is done by transcription factor 2D or TF2D. This to bind the DNA where the gene starts and in the process then recruit the rest of the factors that are going to be doing the reading of the gene, forming the transcription pre-initiation complex or PIC. It took her lab more than 10 years to discover the structure of TF2D and PIC. The tricky part when studying biological samples are how to obtain them, how to prepare them, how to arrange them, so that then you can take images of them that are meaningful, that are going to have important mechanistic information. As technology improved, Eva got closer to her goal. And then finally, a big breakthrough. So there, there was a time when we were collecting our data and doing our data analysis and things did not make sense. And it was very frustrating. And we were backtracking, thinking everything that could have been wrong. And I remember this particular student, he did something very critical that allowed him to realize that one part of this complex was moving very dramatically. Then suddenly everything made sense. So, and from then on, we knew it was going to be difficult, but we knew what we had to do, and we could build uh, from there. That eureka moment allowed her lab to ultimately get the structure of TF2D. Similar breakthroughs were made to get the structure of the rest of the PIC. So what is the significance of this work in day-to-day -day life? It means understanding nature and how it works also allows you to understand how, what happens when nature stops working, when there is a mutation that gives rise to a disease. These scientists say Eva is a leader in her field. She's very confident and sharp and, you know, not afraid to ask questions. She is, in my view, one of the best structural biologists in the world. She's fearless, she's rigorous, um, she's energetic and passionate. Outside of the university, science is never far from Eva's thoughts nor heart. She's married to a fellow scientist and has two sons. What's on that one? Ty? 
she and her elder son bond over a love of cooking. Over the years, it became harder and harder as she became uh, bigger in the scientific community to be able to actually interact with each other. So um, that was always a period where we could sit down together. And her husband admires Eva for her drive. If there's a barrier in the way, she will go through it or around it. <laughs> and that determination helped Eva to win the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine which she shares with Patrick Kramer for visualizing the protein machines responsible for gene transcription. Göttingham, Germany. Structural biologist Patrick Kramer always wants to know what makes natural phenomenon tick. You observe something in nature, you know, something is colorful, something is beautiful. And then if you dig deep, you're able to find a mechanistic, molecular, chemical explanation for these, all these wonders that surround you in nature. He received a diploma in chemistry from the University of Heidelberg in 1995. He studied at the University of Cambridge in the UK, where he decided to concentrate on structural biology. He became an expert in X-ray crystallography during his graduate studies in Grenoble, France. Next, he went to Stanford University in the US as a postdoctoral fellow to work in Roger Kornberg's lab in the late 1990s. The lab had been researching the biochemistry of gene transcription, one of life's fundamental processes. The genes in all living organisms are made of DNA. The RNA polymerase II enzyme transcribes or copies the DNA and makes mRNA. Kornberg's lab had been working for years to determine the structure of RNA polymerase II. It was just that they had problems to get high quality crystals. And my contribution was mainly to um, find out, you know, how can I get the best possible crystals, which then allow me to solve the structure. I was writing letters by surface mail <laughs> to, you know, people back in Europe asking them, can you look through your free? I found several compounds that people have not used before. And on one early morning at the Stanford lab, Patrick had a eureka moment. It was predicted that the polymerase structure is held together by eight zinc ions. And now I could see those zinc ions on my screen early in the morning. And so I jumped up and the chair fell over and I ran out and I watched the sun rising over the Silicon Valley and I felt really good because I knew, you know, it's going to be a lot of work, but uh, I will solve the problem. His work in solving the structure of RNA polymerase II contributed to Roger Kornberg winning the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2006. And these mechanistic insights are extremely important if you want to, uh, for example, get insights that allow you to think about new therapeutic approaches. Such as to develop new drugs to treat cancerous cell growth. Patrick returned to Germany to start his own lab in 2001. Ten years later, his lab made the first movie of gene transcription. And then those snapshots you have to bring in the right order, and then you can animate the scene and you get a movie of transcription. Patrick has also done a very great deal of um, making these scientific discoveries really very approachable by doing things like making uh, movies of uh, uh, how this enzyme works. So this actually helps even on the level of, you know, teaching students. Zhang Yu Meng enjoys learning from Patrick. I think he's a very good teacher and mentor. He knows how to motivate people and bring people all together. Patrick spent nearly a decade as a director of the Max Planck Institute for Multidisciplinary Sciences in Göttingham. Recently has become the president of the Max Planck Society, an association of 85 research institutes. And he's working towards a better future for the next generation. 
there's only one planet and um, I think in the past we have not been aware enough of the damage that we do to the planet. So we have to change our thinking, we have to change our behavior and we also have to invent, we have to have new technologies. That's our Shaw special for this week. Next week we return to our regularly scheduled Pearl magazine.